For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The noted magazine The Economist has declared Italy as its country of the year for 2021. Among the reasons it has cited are a competent, internationally respected Prime Minister in Mario Draghi and a process of thoroughgoing reform. It has also mentioned the country's performance on the COVID-19 front and the economic recovery as reasons to celebrate. But the many protests on the streets of Italy over the past year do not seem to bear out this analysis. Italian people's movements have been harshly critical of the Draghi government for its economic policies, which they have termed as anti-worker. So what is behind the headlines and the bright announcements? Maurizio Coppola of Potere al Popolo explains. First of all, the Economist edition of December 18 declared Italy as their country of the year for three reasons mainly. Uh, first of all, the new Prime Minister Mario Draghi uh, is a responsible and confident person that gave back international recognition to Italy after decades of, uh, of non-international recognition due also to Prime Ministers as uh, Silvio Berlusconi, for example. A second reason is like the rapid economic recovery Italy is living uh, in this uh, post-pandemic uh, situation. And third, the management of the pandemic. Uh, why Italy is not our country of the year? Um, because first of, uh, of, of all, Mario Draghi was not elected uh, by the people uh, as a prime minister, but it was imposed by the president, uh, Sergio Mattarella, when the uh, former prime minister, uh, Conte, was in crisis with the coalition. So uh, there was no elections uh, in February 2021. And this uh, translated itself also in like a, a growing distance between the popular needs, the people's needs, and the political institutional processes. For example, a couple of months after the um, institution of uh, Mario Draghi as prime minister in Italy, there were local elections in Italy, and these local elections saw a very high abstentionism, a very high uh, percentage of people not participating in the elections. So this is one of a, a very important element to show that Italy, in Italy, there is like a growing distance between the popular needs, the people's needs and the institutional processes. So um, this detachment uh, is, is, causing, uh, is causing huge divergences inside of, uh, of, of the Italian uh, society. Then also a second thing is that uh, on uh, December, uh, beginning of December, the, the unions called for a general strike uh, against the measures uh, of, uh, of Mario Draghi because the budget bill he was to uh, implement uh, didn't contain any uh, uh, welfare redistribution measures for the working people. So the unions, even the bigger unions that in general are very aligned to the government's line, um, decided to call for a general strike and every party of the, of the parliament that is uh, supporting Mario Draghi criticized the call for a general strike by the unions. And uh, the day after, because I mean, the general strike was for very good reasons, because in Italy we have social problems, because the, the uh, working situation of, of, uh, of uh, workers are not, is not okay, because uh, exactly of this budget uh, that was uh, voted in the parliament. So there are social reasons to make a strike. The, par the, the parties and Mario Draghi criticized the general strike, and the day after, they vote against uh, um, they vote against legislative proposals, against relocations. They are against minimal wages. So there is no way, there is no uh, urgency for the Italian government to respond to the social needs of the working people. And on the other side, they criticize every uh, political action unions and leftist parties are taking. So this this is one of the. The, the most uh, important, these are mo most important reasons uh, why um, Mario Draghi is not, is not our uh, man of the year and why Italy is not our country of the year. Then we can talk about the, re the economic recovery. We have always to ask for whom is this economic recovery? Italy, okay, the recovery uh, of 2021 is very high. Also the European Commission is predicting an over 6% uh, economic recovery for Italy. But first of all, Italy had also a very big crash of economy during 2020. So the, the recovery is not so high as it is presented. And secondly, exactly the uh, question I asked before, for whom? We have always to ask for whom the economic recovery is. And there are at least two elements that shows that 
there is an economic recovery for the private companies and for the rich and not for the working class. The first element is that Italy in the last 30 years, it's the only OECD country that uh, uh, lift uh, wages dropped uh, uh, in the last 30 years by around 3% per percent, uh, um, in, in 30 years. So we have like other countries of the OECD uh, that uh, where the, 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 the wages rose, but in Italy, it's the only country where these wages dropped for three per, uh, by 3%. And this means also that the working poor, so people working every day, uh, waking up every day to go to the workplace, they are poor. This percentage of the working people uh, who is poor um, uh, rise from 26 to 33% in 30 years. So there is not uh, an economy, uh, economic stability. There is not an economic uh, recovery for the working people. A second element, and this is something very important because in the last days we lived in Italy very hard and very uh, tragic, tragic um, uh, workplace accidents. The people dying at the workplace is rising every year. We have today three people per day dying at the workplace. In the first 10 months, of 2021 in Italy, there are over 1,000 people dying at the workplace. And uh, why is this like this? Because the stress, the pressure at the workplace is uh, increasing, because the labor inspector rate didn't, uh, didn't, uh, do, does not have the power to, to punish also companies not respecting uh, uh, labor security standards and so on. And uh, Mario Draghi, uh, concerning the wages, concerning uh, the security at the workplace, is, do, is not doing anything to, uh, to, to, to improve the situation of working people. And at the end, we can talk about the COVID-19 pandemic in Italy. Of course, Italy uh, has a very high uh, vaccination rate compared to the other countries. Uh, it's only the third, it's the third country in Europe. Uh, only Spain and Portugal has more, has a higher vaccination rate. But there is also uh, other huge problems that the pandemic now in this uh, next wave we are living is hitting very hard. We, yesterday, we had a new record with over 55,000 people uh, uh, infected only in one day and uh, 144 uh, people dying. Uh, why is it like this? Uh, because the healthcare system is under stress. A healthcare system that in the last 20 years lived a, a, a dismantlement. We have like the GDP part going to the healthcare uh, decreased from uh, 2010 to 2020 from 7 to 6.3%. Um, we have, uh, in Italy, there are 4,000 doctors missing in the healthcare institutions. There are 10,000 first aid nurses missing, and there are 54,000 healthcare workers working with precarious uh, uh, contracts. There are precarious workers in the healthcare system. So this is a situation where the healthcare system is under stress, when a pandemic, when an emergency is uh, uh, falling uh, on, the, on the healthcare system. And uh, we have to say that all U uh, European Union post-pandemic recovery plan that now Mario Draghi is implementing in Italy does not uh, uh, go to the roots of these problems. And this is the reason why we said that uh, Italy is not our country of the year and Mario Draghi is not our prime minister of the year.